Okay, the next problem I had was 5.30, and this one, um, uh, there's, a, th there's a lot, so let's just jump into it. So, it says that we have some sliding rocks are approaching the base of a hill. So, let's go ahead and get our hill here, and some sliding rocks. Uh, so, they're approaching the base of a hill at a... Uh, speed of 12 meters. So let's go ahead and get our speed in here, a little vector of 12 meters per second. And the hill has an incline of 36 degrees from the horizontal. And we know that we have frictional coefficients for our rocks is equal to 0.45. And for our hill, the frictional coefficient is 0 0.65. Um, okay, cool. So now what we want to do is find the acceleration of the rocks as they go up the hill. I don't know why we're going up the hill since we were told that it's going towards the base, but that's what the problem says. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so first, we just kind of want to draw a little free body diagram of our rocks here. So first we know that uh, gravity is going to be pulling us down. So that's our mass times our gravity. And then we also know that um, a frictional force is going to be uh, kind of pulling us back and up from our incline. And we know that our incline was like this and frictional force, or normal force, is always perpendicular to the plane that we're moving on. So this is going to be our frictional force right here. And then we know uh, from Newton's third law that our frictional, you know, we have our equal and opposite reaction for every action. So our first action is that frictional force. So this is going to be equal to our mass times our gravity times the cosine of theta. And then we have our um, uh, that's one component to our acceleration. Another component to our acceleration is going to be our mass times our gravity times the sine of theta. And then we have our opposite reaction there. That is actually going to be our acceleration uh, going up the hill. Um, so, first of all, we just want to use Newton's nifty little laws um, to know that the sum of forces in the y or up direction is going to be equal to zero. So those are going to be these ones right here. So then we know that F minus our mass times gravity times the cosine of theta is equal to zero. And then from this equation, we know that our frictional force must therefore be equal to mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. Uh, what we're going to do right here really is just put a bunch of equations together right out of the bat, uh, right out of the cage, and then plug them all together. So now, uh, from again Newton's third law, we have that the sum of all of our forces in the x direction, or, you know, side to side direction, is going, also going to be equal to zero. And those forces are right here. So we know, um, okay, I got a little ahead of myself. We wa do want to use Newton's second law, actually that tells us that that is equal to our mass times acceleration. And then we know that our forces in the x direction are going to be equal to the negative mass times acceleration times the sine of theta. And this is negative because our acceleration is going that way instead of that way. Um, minus our frictional force is equal to mass times acceleration. And then there's a kinematical equation for friction that we're just going to plug in here real quick that says sine theta minus, that's going to be our uh, frictional coefficients, which we have up here, times uh, the frictional force, which we got right here. 
um, is equal to our mass times our acceleration. And then what we're looking for is the acceleration, so we can just move the mass over here. Uh, but first, before we do that, we do want to define, define n here, which we know that um, in this uh, scenario here, n is equal to f. It's just the way they have it written in the book is n. But anyway, so now we know that f is equal to mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. So now we have a negative mass times gravity sine of theta minus our frictional coefficients times mass times gravity times the cosine of theta is equal to acceleration and all this is divided by n since we're moving that over. And then once we divide that through uh, we and uh, uh, factor our acceleration of gravity out, we have a negative gravity times the sine of theta um, plus our frictional coefficient times the cosine of theta is equal to our acceleration. And all of these are known, so we can just plug this in. We know the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second. Sine, we know our theta is 36 degrees, plus our frictional coefficient, and this is the frictional coefficient of, um, of the rocks, because we're looking for the acceleration of the rocks up the hill. So it's going to be 0 0.45 times the cosine of 36 is equal to our acceleration. And then when we plug all that in, we have that we have a negative acceleration of 9.3 meters per second squared. So as the rocks are ooh, rolling up the hill, they're going to be decelerating by 9.3 meters per second per second. And then we'll do another video for the second part since my whiteboard's full.